welcome to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I put together this really cute door quilt that you see behind me. So you might be asking, what is a door quilt? A door quilt is just a really small quilting project that is a hanging quilt or a wall quilt, but you can display it on your door. I thought this was such a fun idea and my plan is to make them as a seasonal decoration to go on my front door. So like other people would have a wreath to decorate their front door, I'm going to do it with quilt projects. What I really liked about coming up with this idea and making this project is that it is a small project. It's 16 blocks. It's basically the size of one quilt block that you would make in a large overall quilt. Another thing I liked about this concept is that it lets you do the entire gamut of the quilting project over the course of a day or two. Quilting is a range of skills. It's not just one thing. So like in knitting, you have uh, stitch tension and making even stitches and things like that. But once you kind of get your stitch tension down and you understand your gauge, you pretty much have it and you can go forward. And as long as you can read the pattern, you can make anything. Quilting is another animal. Quilting <laughs> is many different skill sets. And I think that's why I like it so much. The binding is not my favorite part. <laughs> Eventually, maybe I'll really come to love binding. Right now, I, I don't love the binding. But when I make these smaller projects, it lets me go ahead and put the binding on and I get lots and lots of extra work on building that skill. And I know I'm not alone on the quilt binding. I know a lot of people are terrified of that. What I'm gonna say to you is don't be terrified of it, just work on it. I have another video already on the channel where I made really easy placemats. And even though when I first designed the, the project, I thought it would be a placemat video, it worked out being a quilt binding video. So try those placemats if you're unsure or you're afraid of binding, uh, do the placemats and I will link to that for you and uh, also below. So let's talk about the particular quilt that I have hanging behind me on the door right now. This quilt is going to allow you to really work on your half square triangles and to get comfortable with piecing them into an overall design. Half square triangles require uh, a whole other level of precision and it really boils down to keeping your quarter inch seam right on the money where it needs to be and trimming accurately. This pattern calls for four and a half inch squares and I find having the square quilting ruler that is in the size that you need for your finished square, honest to goodness, it's just the easiest, most consistent way to get those squares right. So if you don't have one, go ahead and pick up a four and a half inch square ruler. I will link one for you below. You are certainly welcome to get whichever one that you like. I personally love the creative grids. I think they're really good and I plan on stocking all of my quilting rulers from creative grids going forward. But if you have the ruler in the size you need, then you know that you are getting your cuts absolutely perfect. It's so easy to be off. So why take the chance? You're going to want three things out of the fabrics that you select. You're going to want something that's going to kind of be like your, your background fabric. You're gonna want something that's going to be your primary print. And then you're gonna want something that I call the contrast. And that is the one that sort of sets off the whole square. Let's take a closer look at this finished project. I put the finished project over here on the cutting table so that we could really look at what's going on. And what you will see is 16 squares. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's four down and four across for a total of 16. Everything in here is a half square triangle except for my corner blocks. 
Now when I initially set up to make this project, I was going to use the blue, which I called my background fabric, in the corners. But I felt like it just kind of washed things out. And so uh, when I placed the orange into the corners, it really popped. So the cutting instructions for this piece I'm actually going to recommend that you cut a little bit extra and the reason for that is when you lay things out what you might find is as you start looking at the pieces interplay um, in the cut pieces you might find that you like something a little bit different and uh, that's why the orange came to be in the corners. Regardless of the fabrics uh, you're going to have solid squares in all corners and in this quadrant all the way around you're going to have half square triangles that are facing each other and technically this is like a sawtooth star design and if this were the same color as the background it would really show off as a sawtooth star but I wanted to have some fun with it but these are going to be the half square triangles with the background fabric around here your center is comprised of four half square triangles and regardless of what you do you want to use that what I call the contrast fabric whatever your really bright unexpected color is that you add in that's what you want to use in the center of your star so I went with the orange with the print and I just found when I put that fabric in the corners it really popped but again this is entirely up to you something you can do that is fun is you can play with the arrangement in the center of your star and I just decided I liked it this way with this triangle in the middle and I just thought the triangle juxtaposed with the squares really looked good and so that's what I went with when you start sewing your squares together what you will do is to first do each row and when all of your rows are together you will then put this row together with that row and make half of your star and then this row with that row to make the other half of the star and then sew them together in the center seam I feel like it's easier to piece if you are working in the larger units rather than going row, 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 row. If you do the two and the two and then together, I just feel like it's a cleaner join. And if you have cut and pieced all of your triangles just like they should be, you will wind up with all these beautiful points. And let me tell you, in quilting, when you put all of these pieces together and you have all of your little points meeting in the center, it is very rewarding. <laughs> and this design will give you many opportunities to practice doing that. And you will also receive the practice in lining up all of your corners. When it came time to do the actual quilting, I did fusible quilt batting and when I did the quilting part of the process, I went all the way around on the outside. And then I did stitch in the ditch. And I'll show you the back. On the back, you can see all of the stitches everywhere around. And I mentioned that I used that uh, cheaper or low-end muslin for my backing because I want to make this style of a project on a regular basis. It could get really expensive, constantly buying yards of prints to go on the back. Uh, so I'm just going to use that muslin. I've got like uh, maybe 10 yards of it in there. It's kind of insane. I don't know why I have so much. I have a lot. <laughs> so I'm just going to use that as the backing for my uh, door quilt. You know, it is rewarding to turn over and to see all of your beautiful intersections on the back. It's really, really gorgeous. Something else I did when I was quilting is uh, I like to use a solid for my border and then I like to put a decorative stitch on the border. And for this one, I wound up using, it looks like leaves to me, and I just kind of went every which way. I did not try to be straight, I just went everywhere. And I just thought that was fun and it was playful. And because the print is leaves and autumn blessings, I thought that this really was like falling leaves. So that was my uh, rationale for doing my uh, little border like that. 
And it's fun. I mean, you have gone through all of the precision uh, cutting and stitching and trimming and piecing and all of that. It's kind of um, nice at the end to just, you know, go a little crazy. <laughs> so enjoy adding a little organic element to all of your precision work. I think that really is fun. I would also encourage you when you have all of your pieces uh, cut and ready to piece together, lay them out in your design on your cutting mat and be like super careful how you pick up your squares to cut into your finished piece. Um, it's very easy to get them confused. The first one of these I made, I got my star just all over the place. It was crazy. and. You think you're going to notice it, and you don't. You, you don't see it. Uh, the way I noticed it was off, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it until I took a picture of it. And when I looked at the picture, I could see where I had made my mistake. And so the first one that I made, I ripped it and redid it several times to get it right. So when I made this one, I made sure to carefully lay everything into place where it needed to be, and just very, very carefully get everything sewn together. It's also helpful if when you get all of your pieces into place where you want them, take a picture of it, you'll have it on your phone, and then when it comes time to start putting things together, it can get very turned around in your head. If you refer back to that picture, you can see how you laid out your block, and then you will remember. Okay, let's jump into the video, and I'll just run through and show you how I put this together. We'll just take a look at me sewing it and, and putting it all together. And uh, yeah, and then I'll come back at the end. For your materials, you will want six different fabrics. I used fat quarters, and in the project as shown, I used three fat quarters to make my quilt top and one fat quarter to do the binding and also the little hanger on the back side. You're going to need about a half a yard of a backing fabric. You're going to need quilt binding and then you're going to need something for your border. You could use the same fabric as your backing. I chose to use the contrasting uh, blue. I typically use a solid in my borders just because I like that separation between the quilt top and the binding and I can run a decorative stitch on it which I always like. When I cut my fabrics I laid them all out carefully together and I cut five and a half inch strips that I then cut down to five and a half inch squares and to keep my life simple <laughs> I wound up cutting eight squares of the background, the print, and the contrast. And all of those went into making the quilt top. For the border, I cut two different sizes. One size measured three by 16 and a half, that went on the sides, or the east-west, and two strips measured three by 21 inches, and they went along the north-south, or top and bottom. This is a view of the back side of the quilt and at the top, and here you can see the little sleeve that I've made. And what I did was took that strip and then I folded it over about a quarter of an inch once and then twice, and then I hemmed it so that gave me a nice finished edge. Then when it came time to finish the binding and machine sew on the backing fabric, which I did by stitching in the ditch on the front and then the stitches caught the back side. When I knew I was at the top, I just slipped the raw edge of this little sleeve inside of the binding, pulled it over and clamped it in place. And what I like about this little sleeve is you have an opening at either end and you just open it up and slip your dowel right through, just like that. Now if you wanted it to be invisible, you could very easily just tack down on the back, just tack it down in a couple of places and it would stay behind. I don't worry too much about it. Uh, and then to get it on to the magnet, I took uh, twine and what I initially did was just like a, 
uh, the lark's head knot and just pulled it around to knot it. And I had two different ends and just put it around. And then I just tied a bow in the top and that's it. And then when it goes on to the door, you can see what it will do is to pull up. So um, this will show. So it is nice if it matches your binding because then you have this fabric that matches the binding. Other materials that you will need to finish this project and hang it on your door include a, a dowel. I found my dowel in the lumber section at my uh, Home Depot store and I cut it down to a 17 inch length. I then used twine to make a hanger and was able to then attach that to the dowel and I wound up buying a super heavy duty magnet hanger to go on my front door which is a metal or a steel door and this metal hanger is great it hangs well it would hold something much heavier but it holds my uh, door quilt beautifully I will link to that below on the table you can see I have everything cut and ready to go for this door quilt project. I have three sets of squares. They're all cut to five and a half inches square. I do cut a little bit large just so that when it comes time to trim down the half square triangles I have plenty of room to get those properly squared. So we have a background, we have what I call our print, and we have what I call the contrast. The solid blue is the sashing or the border. They are cut into two sizes. You have the smaller size that will go on your sides or your east-west orientation, and the longer strips will go to the north-south or top and bottom orientation. The plaid on the far end are cut to two and a half inch strips and they will be sewn together to make both the binding. One of the plaid strips will be used to construct the hanger, which is like a little pocket that will go on the back side of the door quilt so that we can slip the dowel through and hang it. You could hang it on your wall, but I am making this to go on my front door. Other parts to this door quilt that are not pictured are the fusible quilt batting and the backing fabric which I'm using as a very inexpensive cream muslin. I bought the muslin on sale and I've got just yards and yards and yards of it. So for making a door quilt, if I don't particularly need something special on the back, I have been using this plain cream muslin. It works fine and it's inexpensive. To make this wall quilt project, the first thing I'm going to do is to stitch all my binding strips together. I like to start out with having my binding made and ready to go. So I will follow the same method that I shared with you in my binding tutorial, which I will link over uh, below and also up in the upper corner. But just to quickly discuss it, I join all of the strips at right angles, I sew at a diagonal, and when all of the strips are pieced together, I then trim to a one quarter inch seam allowance. I take everything over to the ironing board, press open the seams, trim the little dog ears, press the sewn strips in, in half with uh, wrong sides together. So once the binding is completed, then I will start working on constructing all of the half square triangles that go into this completed project. I like to do all of the half square triangles at the same time so that it's more consistent. I can then chain piece, which is also more consistent. You will be able to sew them a little bit faster and everything will be completely the same. When the half square triangles are sewn and starched and pressed, I will then take them over to the cutting board 
and one at a time using my four and a half inch square ruler I will cut all of the squares down to size. This will include the corner pieces as well as all of the half square triangles. So when all of the pieces are cut, and you do want to be mindful about your grain line and which way your prints are going, especially if you're using something that is directional. And all three of these are directional, which is a little challenging, but we're going to go for it anyway. When everything is trimmed, I will then lay all 16 of the completed squares into the place where they need to go. I will first sew the rows together, and then when the rows are completed, then I will attach the two top rows together, then the two bottom rows, and then when those are all done, I will then sew those two halves together. And of course, in between, I will carefully press and make sure that everything is as flat as can be. I will then attach the borders. The borders will get sewn on first, the side pieces, and then the top and bottom. When the quilt top is done, I will give it its final press, and then I will lay it out onto the fusible, cut the fusible to size, put the fusible in place, lay that unit on top of the muslin, and cut that a little bit wide. At that point, we will do the quilting, and I am just going to do a stitch in the ditch. I like to do a decorative border on the solid. I think it adds to the overall look of the door quilt. So I will go ahead and run around the edge of the quilted quilt and add that little decorative stitch. Once that's done, I will square up the completed quilt and once it's square I will go ahead and fit the binding on. Along the top of the quilt I will make sure to make that little pocket where I can slip the dowel and it will be caught in the stitches as I do my stitch in the ditch machine quilting to finish the binding. I am not doing a hand stitch on my door quilt. I'm just going to do machine quilting for the entire project. When I machine quilt across the top, those stitches will catch that little mini hanger and then the door quilt is ready to go onto the door. That's today's video. As always, I sure appreciate you watching. I really hope that you will make this project and enjoy it as much as I did. So until the next video, I will see you around YouTube. Thanks. Bye-bye.